Today, I'm gonna to attempt to spruce up this unhappy fender. Let's survey the damage here. You can see I have already stripped away the uh, rust from the cracks and stuff so that I don't have to waste time cleaning that up uh, before I weld it. Upon first inspection here, it looks like our best course of action is going to be to uh, give up. I should also mention that I don't intend to make this into a showpiece. The plan is to take this from, oh my gosh, that fender is garbage to Oh my gosh, this fender is garbage, but I can actually use it on my truck and drive around with it without getting pulled over for having body panels that look like uh, they got attacked by a stegosaurus or something. These trucks are common enough where it's not worth my time to spend a whole bunch of time trying to make this into a showpiece when I could just go out and find a much better fender. But because this is what we have, we're going to work with it. Because right now, leaving these fenders the way they are is going to make it just about impossible for me to uh, sell this truck. And if I clean them up and uh, knock out the worst of the damage, then suddenly it uh, becomes a much more appealing project to someone. So the strategy right now is just trying to get these edges pulled back enough to the point where I can start welding this crack because having this, this all loose right now is really working against me so I need to get that secured. So we're just trying to very loosely get things roughed into shape here and that's going to help me work the rest of this back into position.
this is just getting your edges and external dimensions back. You know, once you get that back, a lot of this just all comes back into shape and, and rest is easy, but there's so much strength in your edges and body lines that it can be, uh, be quite difficult. It takes a lot, of for a lot more force than the rest of the panel, but the old way of doing body work in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and even 90s was to just uh, pull your edges back, pull your body lines, and then just fill the rest. And uh, it sounds crude to just fill stuff, but really once you get these edges and your body lines back, that's usually 80, 70, 80% of your damage comes out. So, and uh, you know, you just fill the rest and then uh, if you think about it, the first thing that's going to get shipped is if you got Bondo on your edges or on your body lines. So those repairs usually held up quite well, actually. I think a lot of the issues guys run into, you know, with oil canning or, you know, the panel having weird shapes or not being able to get the rest of the damage out is because they don't spend the time trying to get their edges and their body lines and external dimensions back. Because the strongest part of the panel is also what's going to hold in a lot of your, uh, your damage. So if you don't get it pulled back out, you're either going to have too much metal in this area or not enough or whatever. And it's just never going to, never going to work out for you. So I'm just going to keep hammering on this and, uh, see how it turns out.
Now it should be painfully obvious why I don't uh, film stuff in real time. Because bodywork is just painful, tedious repetition. Not really all that interesting. There's a reason that there aren't any bodymen with over a million subscribers or even close to that. Most people with over a million subscribers uh, play video games. Now, I can understand why people play video games, but I, I can't uh, honestly understand why anyone would ever uh, want to watch someone else play video games. That's got to be the most horrifically, that's even more boring than body work, but uh, somehow apparently that's uh, how you succeed at YouTube. So uh, if anyone actually does enjoy watching this stuff, please uh, like and like the video and leave a comment and all that stuff. think we need to zoom in on these welds. If I was uh, trying to do a decent job of this, I would cut out an area like that, make a patch, and then weld it in all nice. Uh, this is uh, 
I believe they refer to this on MASH as uh, meatball surgery. We're just trying to uh, stabilize this fender. We got, uh, we got choppers bringing in more wounded fenders, so get it in and get it out as fast as we can. That'll be uh, good and solid now. And it's uh, actually starting to look like a fender if you kind of squint a bit. So now we can kind of start smoothing out the rest of this the best that we can or the best that we're going to. I think I'll kind of grind this ugly well down a little bit. That's looking pretty haggard, Merle. Yikes. There's all kinds of pickaxe bodywork going on here, and then uh, what I did didn't really help the situation. So uh, now that we got our cracks all welded, I'm gonna go back over all this and try to smooth out this nightmare the best that I can. And uh, hopefully get it looking a little better than it is. Again, uh, as I said, we're not trying to make this into a showpiece, but uh, I don't uh, want it to look like a total piece of garbage. So let's get started on that.
I removed this uh, brace that runs in behind here. There's just two rivets holding it there because there's a big crease that runs through here. You see that? And it's also caved in. Can't really tell, but it's low here. And so it's just going to be easier to uh, get that brace out of the way and then I can dolly that out and dolly this out and uh, get it all kind of roughed in again. Sometimes you got to make damage to fix damage so it's just easier to knock those two rivets out than to uh, try to mess around with pry bars and the unispotter and whatever. Okay, well, where we left off is I had uh, run this through the English wheel very lightly just to kind of iron it out a little more. I don't normally like doing that, but in this case, we didn't really have anything else to lose. I'd, uh, I wish I could afford a handheld planishing hammer because if I had one of those, I'd be pretty much unstoppable. But anyways, we kind of got it smoothed out a little better with the English wheel. And then I just went over it and uh, sanded it down. And, uh, and you notice the black primer there that's where I did a uh, Tijuana tack and bash as uh, pioneered by Scott from Cold War Motors so we certainly didn't need to show that on camera if you're not familiar with the uh, Tijuana tack and bash it's very similar to the uh, Louisiana lap weld that we demonstrated on another episode but uh, it's arguably less destructive and it's kind of a good used car hack and once it's sealed up in the backside you can uh, you usually get uh, quite a bit of time out of it again we're not trying to hide that this fender is garbage we're just trying to stabilize the patient and you know if anybody ever wants to uh, cut that out and metal finish a fancy patch in they can whereas the uh, Louisiana lap weld it's pretty destructive once that's done you're kind of out of luck so now we've got something to attach a running board to 
kind of did the same thing on the back for a rudimentary patch just to uh, stabilize things. I was actually going to do some bodywork on this fender, that's why I sanded it down to metal. But then I decided I'm just going to leave all the battle scars and the Frankenstein and looking thing it's got. Again, I don't want to hide that this fender is garbage, I just want to make it make it into something you can, you know, if you're going down the road at 50 miles an hour, looking at it from 10 feet away, it doesn't look horrible. I mean, the shape is all back into it there, so, you know, very still chunky and not perfect, but it's not, uh, not as bad as it was, I think. And get a uh, gruesome close up there. This is where all the pickaxe bodywork was, so that's always very difficult to kind of iron out. And then here is where we welded up our, uh, our crack or whatever and didn't make any attempt to metal finish that out. And you can see all these little divots and stuff. That's where I didn't have the metal, the two planes of the metal perfectly aligned. I just well, you saw in the video, I basically just hammered it together. With the TIG weld, you can kind of planish that out to uh, some extent, but there's a point where you, you don't want to work the metal more than you have to. Ideally, you want both planes of the metal lined up perfectly, you know, if you're going to be metal finishing it, whatever. But in this case, we're just just hammering it together. So I kind of like the, the ugly... Frankenstein scars and stuff, it'll kind of give it some character. But I'm going to finish sanding this all down. And then the plan is to just hit the box sides and the fenders with some red oxide primer so it doesn't look quite so out of place with the cab. This box obviously is an original to the truck. And the guy I bought it from, he just set it on here. There's like some weird stuff set up. I think it originally had a flat deck on it at some point so the guy just put this on so it looked more complete so he could fool unsuspecting buyers into purchasing the truck which obviously worked because it's in my garage now. Well, there you go we kind of glorped on some red oxide there to kind of hide some of the sins. You know from uh, from afar I almost uh, convinced myself into thinking this was a good fender so still uh Got all the battle scars visible here, so that's cool. And uh, that's kind of where we're gonna leave it. Like I said before, if I was going to be trying to do like a, you know, a fancy repair on this, I would just cut out where it was cracked, weld it in a patch. Same thing over here, it's just so badly fatigued and tore up that you know there's really no there wouldn't be any gain in trying to to you know I guess metal finish it out or whatever so we'd uh, we definitely have to be putting in a patch there to uh, to get that smooth out any better but for all of our intents and purposes on this fender I'd say uh, the the goal was achieved not entirely sure what that goal was but uh, nonetheless uh, there's the uh, fruit of our labor, so to speak. Hey, I uh, hope you enjoyed watching me spruce up this unhappy fender. If you didn't enjoy it, well, uh, I don't blame you because uh, I know I didn't. Also wanted to give a big thank you to our patrons of the show, as well as uh, those of you who have used the uh, super thanks and the super chat and whatever those are called. It's been really super so I definitely appreciate your donations to the channel it uh, helps me to continue to produce these videos in combination with the patrons so you guys are awesome also thank you to the, all the rest of you for liking and uh, commenting and watching the videos and uh, subscribing and all that stuff uh, it all all that all adds up to uh, helping grow the channel and uh, get these videos seen by by a larger audience, which uh, is kind of probably a dangerous thing, but uh, it helps me out nonetheless. So probably bad for the rest of civilization, but uh, I never care much for them anyways. So we'll just carry on, I guess. Anyways, I won't waste any more of your time, but at least on the next video. So uh, take care, everyone.